Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Faith with Love Fellowship. We are delighted to be able to come into your home and uh, to be here in the church with brothers and sisters of like and precious faith. Amen. Um, hallelujah. We just finished our praise and worship practice, and um, it's it's wonderful. Amen. When we uh, prepare the atmosphere, charge the atmosphere um, by bringing God uh, and his presence into it. Amen. He says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So when we come together and we begin to praise the Lord, amen, um, it brings him honor, it brings him glory, and he uh, enjoys to come and uh, be in with us. Amen. Hallelujah. I had opportunity to listen to um, Sister Denise Burns out at Ramah, and uh, such a marvelous uh, job uh, sharing about uh, how very important it is that we uh, remain sensitive to the Holy Ghost and uh, let uh, him flow how he uh, wants to flow, amen, and make uh, a habitation for the Lord, a place where he would want to come and pull up a chair and, and stay with us, amen. It's, it gives him so much pleasure to be with his people, people who are hungry and thirsty for God, amen. God's presence and his power will always be displayed in that atmosphere, and uh, so we're very grateful for those things. Hallelujah. Uh, we have set these uh, services on, on Wednesday night in more of a Bible study format. Uh, we have been doing, because we really felt it was the leading of the Holy Spirit, to do more of a line-upon-line study of the Bible, because uh, apparently not everyone is has, has read through their Bibles, and if they have, uh, sometimes certain things are a little bit uh, ob obscure to them. And so uh, we have begun just going line upon line to hopefully allow the Spirit of God to bring revelation, to bring wisdom and understanding to the Word of God. Amen. He's the author. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and so he uh, also can give us the understanding, the revelation, hallelujah, of, uh, of the Word of God. Amen. Now, of course, the Word of God is Jesus. Amen. Jesus Amen. is the Word of God made flesh. Amen. So it's not a Bible. Uh, it, it is the living Word of God. Amen. The Word of God is alive. Hallelujah. It's quick. It's active. Sharper than a two-edged sword. It is that part of the armor that the Bible talks about as the, as the, as the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God in our mouth is how we uh, act on uh, the, the Word of God, how we, how we release it into our world, amen, by speaking the Word of God in our lives. Regardless of what we feel, see, hear, what's going on around us, what other people think, um, the Word of God uh, will never return unto him void. It will always accomplish what he sends it to do. And uh, as we have that attitude in our heart that the Word of God in our hearts and out of our mouths will never return void, but will accomplish what uh, we have sent it to do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, let's get into the Word. And, um, you know, the point I want to make is, is thank God for these times, these Bible studies and times of worship. And, and you know, we get into the, these times of, of study of the Word of God. Amen. I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm, I'm excited. It's, it's just in me. Um, the Word of God will, you know, teaching from the Bible will never uh, lose its power because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You're with me, my brothers and sisters? But part of our relationship with God is not only to uh, spend time in the Word of God, but is to spend time with God. Amen? Hallelujah. And bring the Word with you. Bring Him in remembrance His Word. But remember that He's your Father. And he loves you. And he, he wants to hear from you. And, and, and stay connected. Amen? Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. But when you're connected with me, Amen. There's nothing you can't do. He is the God of the impossible. He is the God of victory. Amen. So, you know, balance your time in the word of God with praise and with worship. Hallelujah. And, and sing the Psalms. Hallelujah. I, I, I have shared Psalm 23 uh, so many times. Psalm 91, the Psalm of Protection. Uh, Psalm 23, for instance, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I like to say it's written in the present progressive tense, which means it's always relevant, it always timely, it always belongs to you and to me. And so let the meditations of our heart and, and the words of our mouth be pleasing in thy sight, O God. So, you know, reciting the Psalm 23 and saying, Lord, you're my shepherd. 
Amen. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. You with me? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Where are you? You're in the valley of the shadow of death. But your joy is set because surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Nothing takes the place of praise and worship. Amen. So we'll, let's get into the word of God. And if you spontaneously get um, blessed by the revelation from the word of God, then, then express your gratefulness to God. Tell him, Lord, thank you for that, that wisdom. That came from you. That came from heaven. That was a gift to me tonight. And I'm so grateful. I'm so appreciative. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So Amen. the Sermon on the Mount continues. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1. Um, doing good, all right, pleases God. But the, the obligation, thinking that if I do good, I will please God, is out of, out of order. Amen? We, when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we please God. Hallelujah. There's nothing more that we need to do to please God. It's by receiving his son, by receiving the gift of salvation found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. I told you before, when we stand before God, Christians and non-Christians, the only questions God's going to ask is, what did you do with my son? And for those of us that have said, I've received him as my personal savior, Lord of my life. I have devoted my life to follow after the word of God and to put to practice the principles that have been outlined for me and, and to live a life filled with gratitude, thanksgiving for what God has done, to keep my relationship with God alive and fresh and to serve people to the very best of my ability by, with the Holy Spirit's help. Amen? Or I didn't really think about him. I ignored him or I heard about it, but I don't agree. It doesn't match my way of thinking or, or my friends or what we, whatever the, my teachers told me. And, and the list goes on and on. And, and that's the only question he's going to ask. What did you do with my son? And to those that have embraced the Lord Jesus, amen, he, he's going he's gonna to say, you chose to be with me, so then come and be with me. But those who did not choose to be with him, then, then, then there's no other place for you to go but, but darkness. Amen? And, uh, and it's not God's will that any perish, that all come to the same knowledge of God. But it's up to each individual person to decide. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? And, and so, you know, it's, it, when you accept Jesus, you please God. And then all the precious promises of God to you are yes and amen. And everything that Jesus has accomplished becomes your property. And you can walk in the power, you can walk in the love, you can, you can lay hands on the sick, they'll recover, you can do the works of Jesus. Amen? God desires everybody to do the works of Jesus. But it's the first step is to receive him as your personal Savior and Lord. Amen? Glory to God. And it's for his honor and glory, not for self-promotion. Always keep that in mind. It's not about you, it's never been about you. It's about him. We're here to advance his kingdom. Amen? Uh, I remember when I was at Rama, I struggled a little bit about my calling. And I didn't know what I was called to do, you know? The, the prophet, the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, amen, the evangelist, and, and then the ministries of helps, and, and so many different things. It's all part of the ministry. And, and so, you know, the thought is, well, I'm, I'm going to be an apostle for God. Or I'm going to be a prophet and, and, and people are going to, you know, know my name. And I'm going to have a shingle on the, on the side of my ministry, prophet so-and-so. And, 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 you know, and, and, and then or I'm going to be whatever, you know, world traveling evangelist. And, and sometimes we, we get into these, these um, basically their ruts. And I struggled with it because I didn't know what God had called me to do or to be. And so as I was praying about it and striving a little bit over it, I'll never forget Buddy Harrison, who has gone home to be with the Lord. He's the uh, founder of Harrison House Publishing. He actually uh, married um, Brother Hagen's daughter. Yes, daughter. Yes, exactly. Pastor Hagen is his son, and uh, Patsy is his daughter. And um, anyway... Um, 
uh, was always with Brother Hagen. was on a lot of the uh, early days of uh, Faith Crusades. He was there. Well, he was invited to preach at Rama one time. He talked about quality decision. I'll never forget. You make a decision to follow God, not in wartime, but in peacetime. Amen? You can't make a decision to, to follow God uh, and, to, and to not sin and put yourself in ungodly circumstances and situations and then decide whether or not you're going to participate. You can't do it that way. You'll fall every time. You've got to make a decision before you get into the heat of battle that will hold you fast when you get there. Are you with me? But he said something that completely set me free. He was talking about the ministry of the Lord Jesus. And he looked out among the congregation, and he says, Never forget, we are all in the ministry of helps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And it absolutely set me free because what I was thinking about, what is my calling, what is my title, what what is, you know, what is it that God has for me? And it, it never was about me. It's never been, never will be about me. It's all about him. Amen? And so they asked Jesus and it answered every question that you'll ever have or I'll ever have about ministry. He said, Jesus, what's the most important thing? In other words, what's the, what's the number one commandment? What, what's the most important thing and Jesus answered, listen, my brothers and sisters, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with everything in you, love God. Amen. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's ministry. The title doesn't matter. Truthfully, God has used me through the years in ways that I never thought I would ever flow. I have flowed in the prophetic. I have flowed in, in all kinds of different miracles and signs and wonders, not to my credit or to pat me on the back. I'm just a willing vessel. And if God wants to use one of the gifts of the Spirit to help somebody else, then all right, because he knows I'm not going to take credit for it. I didn't come up with it. I can't manifest it. I can't do it. Are you with me? Yeah, it's the truth. Hallelujah. You know, there are, there's been meetings, I believe it was some of the big meetings back in the day with T.L. Osborne. He was a world uh, a renowned evangelist, amen. And um, he and his wife Daisy uh, traveled all over Africa and had meetings and just a simple Oklahoma couple, you know. And, um, and they went out and they saw such miracles, signs and wonders and things. And, and people would come, Brother uh, T.L. and Daisy would just preach the simple gospel, amen. Just tell them how God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And if you'll place your faith and trust in this son, his name is Jesus, you can, you can have life. You can come out of darkness and out of bondage and have hope and have life. And he preached, he, they preached a very simple gospel. And then I remember reading that miracles started to happen. And people started to get healed all over, big crowds of people. And people were responding to the, to the word of God and people were getting healed. And then some of the people would come up to uh, Brother T.L. and say, did, did you know that there was a brother back there who was blind and, and now he can see? Did you know that there was a sister back here who had no legs and, and her legs grew out? And, and pretty much Brother T.L. was, is that right? He says, that, that's wonderful. Because he knew he didn't do it. God did it because of people's response to the word of God. They responded in faith. They were hungry. They were thirsty. They received what God was offering. And so they met God one-on-one. -on -one. God didn't need Brother T.L. to do it. He just needed him to do his part to preach the gospel, to go those, to those places and to, to you know, build the, the, you know, the sound system and, and pay uh, the people or do whatever it is, build the whole thing, get it all set up and preach the gospel. And, and then it was up to God to do signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. The Bible says that these miracles accompany the preaching of the gospel. Are you with me? So what gets me on these things, I guess it started off with pleasing God. We have to remember that we please God just by accepting his son. And then from there, it is a matter of sacrifice, yielding yourself. 
and allowing our motto scripture is don't be conformed to this world or this world's way of thinking, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove in your own life and for your own ex experience the perfect will of God, amen, for your life. Hallelujah, amen. Um, it, it's very important uh, that, we, that we realize these things. So Matthew chapter 6 um, Jesus is warning against doing good just to be seen by others. He says, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward from your Father in heaven. And we've been just going through Matthew. And so this is where we're up to. And he's going to um, share some very strong teaching. Um, a lot of the teaching that Jesus brought was not necessarily new news to many. For instance, here he's teaching in the synagogues, and there are in his congregation Pharisees, Sadducees, learned people, people who've been in the in in the in the Bible, the Word of God, the, the Old Testament, the Torah, that they've devoted their lives to it, and so they they are doing some of these things, but. Jesus is letting them know that, that in many cases they're not doing them correctly. Amen? And it's not a matter of doing them in the flesh correctly. It's they've been doing them in the flesh to the best of their ability, and God was wanting them to do it from the heart. Amen? To do it because it's real and it's alive. Uh, never is God pleased with us doing because we feel it's obligation. Or somehow we bless, you know, we're, Lord, I'm doing this for you. We, we don't have to do that. Amen? If we're doing it for God, then we're not doing it for the right reasons. Are you listening? Amen? We're basically flowing because we want to, we, we thank him for, for loving us, for, for, um, for, for honoring him, for, for um, being, uh, being blessed by us. And then we're allowing him to flow out to other people. Glory to God. So it's almost like we get out of the way in a manner of speaking and let him uh, flow through us. Amen. He, he is uh, flowing through our hands and he's flowing through our feet and, and we yield our, our mouth and we say, Lord, make my pen, make my mouth like the, like the pen of a ready writer and speak through me to be a blessing to your people. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, here he, he compares the difference. He says, therefore, in chapter 6, verse 2 to 4, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Amen? You with me? And so he, he's comparing as hypocrites do, as hypocrites do, as hypocrites do. This is the Sermon on the Mount. And he's telling them, don't do as hypocrites do. In other words, don't be a hypocrite. Amen? Worship God in spirit and in truth. It's not a game. Amen. It's not so that you can, uh, well, I, I read 10 chapters a day. Well, well, good for you. But how much time do you spend with God? You know, well, I, I'm, I read a chapter a day and a psalm and the rest of it. And I read it, you know, because I just want to, I just want to say that I read the Bible in a year. And it says, the Bible says without love, you're, you're a clanging symbol. You're, you, there's nothing to it. it there's got to be because of love for love for God. I want to spend time in the Bible, spend time in prayer because I love God and because I, I want um, more of him in my life. Amen? You see the difference between the two? Uh, the, to, to worship God in spirit and truth is to do it because uh, you know in your heart that it, it's, it's the right thing. He's touched you. He's, 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 he's laid his hand on you. He's blessed you. He's brought revelation. You see things now that you've maybe never seen before. And it's being done out of a, an attitude of, of a pure heart. And a broken, a broken spirit, so to speak, broken before God. Lord, I, I've sinned against you and I'm sorry. 
and, and I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that, that sin is, is not part of who I am. Amen? And, and when I think thoughts that I shouldn't think, I'm going to do what you said in the Bible. I'm going to take them captive. I'm going I'm to I'm arrest them. I'm gonna put them in handcuffs, throw them in the back of my squad car. Stuff a rag in their mouth so they stop talking. Amen? What, what we're talking about? We're talking about thoughts that pop into your mind. Thoughts of compromise. Thoughts of sin. Thoughts of that, that, that go against what God has for your life. Amen? The, the Word of God tells us, I don't have time to preach all these messages, my brothers and sisters. You, you, you just have to, you know, keep coming, keep listening, and, and we'll cover it all. You know, the Bible says that, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, amen? And, and rulers of dark things, dark places, thoughts and, and intentions of the heart that battle in our mind. The battlefield is the mind. God, the, the, the devil's trying to get a hold of your mind, and God says, no, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do something with your mind. Don't give it over to the devil to speak into your mind, tell you you can't, you're not this enough, you're not that enough. Tell him, shut up. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible says, greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. Amen? The Bible says that I can't fail because God can't fail. He says, as far as I'm concerned, the Bible calls me more than a conqueror. That's who I am. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and, and so, you know, uh, it's so very important that we maintain this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This pure heart and, and honesty before God. Uh, here he is talking about, you know, hypocrites. Hypocrites are actors, basically. They're, they're playing a part. They're, they're doing a role. It's not the real them. It's not the real person. You know that the young man who plays Spider-Man, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, he can't climb walls and he can't swim through cities. He's just an actor. Yeah, right? And yeah, it's all kinds of other things. And, and, and the actor who plays in The Matrix, you know, he, he's not really bulletproof. He, he just an act, he's an actor. He's going through, you know, and there's a lot of other ones. We just saw a movie yesterday. I mean, it's become more CGI than, than people, so much. But it, it basically takes the limits off, so they can go so far because it's it's not reality. It's all it's all computer imaging, and um, and so you know, wow, it's just like wow, this is something else. Uh, the the movie that came out just recently, Avatar. It's just it's amazing. This you know the, the money that it costs to produce it. Why? Because all the people involved in doing the computer, you know, enhancement and everything, you know, piece by piece, shot by shot kind of a thing. And that's unfortunately so much of what the world has to offer and it is just, it's not real, it's not reality, it's, it's fake, it's, it's phony. Uh, so many people that we know of, no disrespect, if, if you choose to do it, that's up to you. I'm not judging you or condemning you. But so many people are in, into plastic surgery and all kinds of things in the hope of trying to regain their youth or whatever. I understand. Don't, don't write, me, write me letters. I'm not here to offend you. But somewhere in the whole mix, they lose their identity. There are people that I've seen and they see them, you think to yourself, what did you do to yourself? I don't even recognize you anymore. Are you listening? And so don't write me letters. I don't mean to offend anybody. But the point is somehow we lost touch with what's real, what's true. Amen? And there is one. Hallelujah. That he came to this earth. He was not of this planet. He came to this planet because we needed reality. We needed truth. And so God so loved the world that he did not forsake us in darkness, in, in, in you know, this ultimate reality that we, that we live in, truthfully, but he came to reveal to us who we really are and, and whose we really are and what God has provided, amen, and what his plan for our lives is. And when we receive Jesus, we receive truth. We receive reality, amen, hallelujah. Um, I've said it before, truth is greater than reality. 
So though you say this is reality, these are the circumstances, I can see it. It's all, it's this is the evidence, I can see it, I'm experiencing it, I feel the pain and all the rest of it. The word of God is offering truth and truth says by the stripes of Jesus you've been healed. And truth supersedes reality. Amen? Because this is really not reality. This is really not reality. This is not who we were created to be. Just horizontal. Moved by every wind of doctrine. Moved by circumstances, situations. What we hear in our natural ear. What people are saying. What opinions of man is going into our heads and all the rest. That's not who we were created to be. Amen. Talk about limiting us. Talk about putting us, paralyzing us. Come on. We, the Bible says, whom the Son says free is free indeed. You have been set free. We're to cast our cares. Don't carry them. You can't carry your cares. Your shoulders aren't big enough for them. He says, you cast your cares. It's not a suggestion. It's a demand. You cast your cares unto me because I care for you. Amen? Don't carry them. Don't, don't, don't take them to sleep with you. Don't let them become your constant companions. Stop. Amen? There's only one that deserves to be your constant companion. Amen? That in him we live and move and have our being. There's nothing and no one else that deserves that place of intimacy in your life and in my life. You're with me, my brothers and sisters. So he says it over and over again. Don't be a hypocrite. Such performers are rightly called hypocrites because they are actors, acting the part of pious, holy people when they are truly not. Are you with me? So anyway, let's continue. Matthew 6, 5 and 6. And when you pray, amen, when you pray, let's say if you pray, when you pray, Pastor um, Denise, Miss Denise, uh, this morning, if you didn't get a chance to, uh, Winter Bible Seminar is going on at Raymond right now, and uh, every session has been phenomenal, right on the money, amen? And um, this afternoon, I believe at the 10.30 uh, Raymond time, 11.30 our time, um, Miss Denise, uh, Mrs. Denise uh, Burns, um, pastor and Miss Lynette's daughter, she, what an amazing job she did. And, uh, you know, one of the things she said uh, by the Spirit of God, she said, I don't want to say this, but God wants me to say it. And she says, if the only time you read your Bible and pray is to get a message, talking to pastors, and you have no true relationship with God for yourself. And the same thing, if the only time you read your Bible is, is when, you need, when you need God, or the only time you pray is when everything is going bad in your life, Take stock, my brothers and sisters, repent, because we're supposed to live white hot for God every moment of every day. We're supposed to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Amen? We're supposed to live this every moment of every day. Hallelujah. We are his, he is ours. We have, we have sacrificed ourselves and our own will and our own hopes and dreams on the altar and we have picked up his cross, amen? In other words, his plan, his will, what's important to him, what he says goes, not what we say. Who's Lord, my brothers and sisters? He is Lord. We're not to demand him to do something. Lord, I need you to do this for me. Lord, I need you to come through here. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Lord, I need the other thing. And who do we think we are? Are you listening? It's a matter of, no, we're supposed to hear and obey. We're supposed to wait on the Lord and he renews our strength like eagles. And then when he tells us what to do, we do that without hesitation, without adding our two cents to it. We just simply obey, to trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. So are you with me, my brothers and sisters? So then he goes on, he's talking about prayer. He says, and when you pray, so it is definitely God's will that you pray, amen? How often? The Bible says pray always. Pray without ceasing. Stay in constant 
communication with your father. And communication is not one-sided. Communication is talking and listening. Talking and listening. And it's not listening just to hear, it's listening to comprehend and then to yield, to obey. You're talking to Almighty God. He knows business success plans. He knows marital success plans. He knows personal success plans. He knows relationship uh, success plans. He has everything. He knows everything. And he wants to share these things with you. But if you don't give him the opportunity to, then he can't. Are you listening? I said years ago, we used to um, talk to uh, someone on the ham radio, and they were in another country, and we talked on the ham radio, and, and you had to set up a time where you were gonna both be on the radio. And then when you turned it on shortwave, you turned the big dial approximately to where the numbers are that the other person is speaking, and then you turn another number, and you finally turn a small dial till all of a sudden you say, you know, whatever the lingo for, for the shortwave radio, you say, uh, call a sign, this, that, the other thing, and the person responds on the other end. And you've made a connection. You've made a secure, as you can, connection, the point is. And so God is, is, is calling, God is beckoning, God is, 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 is desirous, set a time. And, and, and it's, he doesn't want it to just be two minutes, five minutes, he wants it to be ongoing. Keep the channel of communication open. And if you're having a trouble hearing from God, if you're having trouble, if it's become obscure, then you need to get other stuff out of the way, you turn that dial, listen, Many times when the operator was doing it, he put headphones on. Why headphones? So he didn't have to listen to the sounds all around him. He's listening just for that one signal. And as he's working diligently, he finally brings in that radio wave. Now he hits the speaker button and we hear nice and loud. How many know it's very similar to God? God's talking. He says, my sheep hear my voice. We don't hear God because, we don't hear, excuse me, we um, do not hear God because he's not talking. We don't hear God because we're not listening. Amen? Ooh, Brother Hayden used to say, say, oh me, or say, oh my, it's true either way. This is true. Amen? If we're not hearing God, it, it's not, a, it's not a, a transmitter problem, it's a receiver problem. We need to quiet ourselves down. We need to get rid of all the distractions the sin that does so easily beset us. And most of the sin, I don't think it's, it's physical, hopefully not physical, but some of the stuff is, is what we're listening to. We're just listening to too many other voices. And we're, we're not supposed to be listening to all these voices. We're supposed to tune our ear to that one voice. And he's not gonna speak to us in a thunderous voice. I've asked him to, believe me. He's not gonna speak to us in a thunderous voice. He told the prophet of old, he says, I wasn't in the thunder and the lightning. I wasn't in the wind. It's the still, small voice. And that comes because how precious he is, how valuable he is. And he wants us to treat it like, Lord, your voice to me is life. And so whatever I need to do to get every other distraction out of my way, that I can hear you that you know that you are so precious to me that nothing compares to you, that I'm a grateful son, I'm a grateful daughter for salvation, and you have called me out of darkness, and you have translated me into the kingdom of the son of your love, and I have eternal life, and I'm alive forever, and I have the Holy Ghost, and I'm covered in the blood, and I, and I have your word and all the precious promises of God, a yes and amen. And, and therefore, you know, everything else has got to take, just shut up, shut up. Uh, I have to, I have to spend time with God. Jesus, you remember, he was only a young boy and he was, went to Jerusalem, remember? And, uh, and afterwards, his family and the whole entourage he came with had left and they thought that he was in the group with his cousins or whatever and they couldn't find him and they went back 
And finally, after many days, read the Bible, they found him in the temple. And what was he doing? He was discussing the scriptures with, with learned men. And, and when they said to him, what have you done? He says, don't you know, I must, I must be about my father's business. It's consuming. It, it's, it's what's real. It's what's, it's what's true. Amen? And he says, as his custom was, he'd get up early, spend time with God. It, it was life to him to spend time. He said, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. We're talking about a very intimate relationship. Amen? And if this was God incarnate, how much more do we need that intimate relationship every moment of every day? And how, how flexible can we be with other voices? We should not be flexible. We should be immovable. Amen? Steadfast. He said, hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God. Amen? Remain steadfast. Set your heart. Hallelujah. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? And so, you know, here he says, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, the actors, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Amen? Lavishly. Generously. Hallelujah. Peace. Strength. Courage. Wisdom. Knowledge. Understanding. Attitude adjustments. Make sure your motive is right. Are you with me? That's what he does. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Because he is truth. Then it's Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. This is the right way to pray. He says, And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think, this is what they think, the heathen, that use vain repetitions. They think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Hallelujah. The model prayer. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed or holy is your name forever. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Your, I want your priorities in my life. I want to obey your word. I want to see your will through my life. Amen? On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, our trespasses, as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Hallelujah. The right kind of prayer comes to God as a father in heaven. It rightly recognizes whom we pray to. Are you with me? And it opens us up to understand the privilege that we have to speak to almighty God and to know him as our heavenly father. Amen. A father who loves us, who protects us, who guards us, who keeps us, who gives us understanding and wisdom so that we can operate in his plan with his blessing. Then he comes behind us and he makes sure that he's got our back. Are you with me? No weapon formed against me will prosper. Praise God forever. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Remember that his name is holy. Remember that he deserves praise. He deserves worship and adoration. Hallelujah. Yes. He doesn't necessarily need it for who he is. He needs you to recognize how good he is and who he is. 
and to offer it freely, even a sacrifice of praise. Even when you don't feel like it, let praise arise. Let praise arise. Amen? Why? For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Glory to God. If you ever don't feel like praising God, you know it's the devil. What do you do when you don't feel like praising God? When you don't feel like, you know, you have any reason to praise God? No reason to have, to have joy. No reason to dance and skip and shout. What do you do? Dance and skip and shout. Amen? Hallelujah. Because the Lord is worthy. And the Lord has great, done great things for us. Wherein we are glad. Hallelujah. Praise God. You just need to remember. Just need to remember. Somehow the devil has got you to forget. Come on, it's the truth, right? He says, forget not my benefits. Don't forget the benefits. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? Why would he say don't forget the benefits? Because we're prone to forget. And the devil gets in there, and before long we forget how good God is. We forget how much, how love, how, how amazing love uh, was, was shown to you and to me by the sending of his son, our Lord Jesus. The angels cried, glory, 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 amen? Good news, Savior has been born. We just celebrated Christmas not too long ago. And we get to re rehash it, rehearse it over and over and over again. But we should be living in the reality of every day, amen? The Savior has come. We're not looking forward to a Savior coming. The Savior has come, yes. amen? The Old Testament brothers and sisters had no understanding of it being in the past tense. They were looking forward to something that had not yet happened. They saw it by faith. Joseph saw it by faith. Abraham saw it by faith. It hadn't happened. He was looking into the future because he believed they believed God's word. Amen? But we are looking back on something that was accomplished. We beheld him with our own eyes. We touched him with our own hands. Are you with me? It's so well documented. There, there are places you can go and, and they, it, it, there, there's all kinds of, 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 of evidence that says that yes, in fact, Jesus, the almighty God, came to this planet, amen, and lived amongst us. And it's just, there's evidence all around us. Praise God. And changed hearts are one of the most powerful evidences ever of those who were once in darkness and have seen a great light and come out of that darkness and, 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 and attitudes have changed and, and hearts' desires have changed and, and wants have changed and, and whose will is done is changed and, and changed, are you with me? By the Holy Spirit, by the power of God, amen? Hallelujah. So anyway, let's continue just a little bit more. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. The importance of forgiveness. Amen? We who have been forgiven much have to learn to forgive. Are you with me? Let me say it again. We who have, begin, who have been forgiven much, so much, need to be people who are willing to forgive others. He says in Matthew 6, 14 through 16, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now that comes into a, a whole other message, truthfully, called the fear of God. Amen? God is not to be feared in the way that we think, you know, we've not been given a spirit of fear. Fear has torment. That's not the kind of fear we're talking about. The kind of fear we're talking about is we have an understanding that if we obey God, that we will receive his blessing in our life. But if we disobey God, then we will not see his blessing in our life. And that causes us to, in a pure motive, be afraid. To be afraid, but not, you know, terror. To just know in your heart, why would I do that? Why would I open up my family? Why would I open up myself? Why, why would I willingly open myself up 
for judgment to come into my life. Are you with me? And so you live in the fear of God. I will do what God tells me to do so that I may enjoy his blessing in every area of my life. Because if I choose to disrespect him, disregard him, then I am inviting calamity into my life. And I'm not going to do that. Are you with me? Some people say, well, my sin doesn't hurt anybody but me. That's not true, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says that he visits the iniquity upon his children, generation after generation after generation. That should make you afraid. That should make you say, wait a minute. I have grandchildren and great-grandchildren that aren't even born yet. Why would I allow a curse to come upon them just because of an act of selfishness on my part? an act that I feel entitled to, an act of disobedience because my flesh, I haven't done what God told me to do with my flesh. Amen? Come on, it's the truth, my brothers and sisters. The fear of God will keep you right. And it's an important part of, of our walk with God. Amen? I've said it for a long, long time. The Bible says if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured with a sword. We have example in the book of Judges over and over and over and over, like 14 times, all right? I believe number 15 is the Lord Jesus. I believe number 16 is the Holy Spirit. But every time the Israelites turned away from the word of God, their hearts went cold. They turned away from the worship of God they forgot who they were. They forgot whose they were. And they be, and, and while they and, and they became easy pickings to other nations. They were taken over. They were they were dominated. They were enslaved. They 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 were in bondage. And and read read the book of Judges from beginning to end. And sometimes fifteen years went by in horrible bondage in hopelessness and despair. And then God raised up what the book of Judges says, a judge. Somebody who has turned to God with all of their hearts. And that person, that individual, was able to bring the whole nation to repentance. The whole nation back to God. And when the people repented and turned back and wept before God, and, and declared, we have forsaken you. We have forsaken your word. We have forsaken the, your worship, the worship of you. We have turned to idols. We have turned to darkness. We have done what was right in our own sight. We repent with sackcloth and ashes. The Bible records that God moved marvelously in their midst and restored them to prosperity and to blessing and strength and health, and they became unconquerable. No nation would challenge them. But then that judge usually passed away. And after a certain amount of time, they forsook the assembling of themselves together. They forsook the word of God. They forsook worship. They, they, they began to, you know, compromise and listen to other voices, started worshiping idols, what was convenient. And the same thing happened again. Read your Bible. It happened over. Sometimes it was it was 15 years. Sometimes it was more. Sometimes we think to ourselves, why in the world would you stay in that place for 15 years of bondage, of being basically a, a puppet, a toy, to be played with by anybody and everybody, to be bounced around back and forth, hopeless and helpless, despair and, and, and lack. Why would you bring that into your home? I don't have an answer for you, my brothers and sisters. They didn't have a fear of God. They didn't understand that God is, Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And when we don't believe that and act like that's true, then we just, we're dead branches. 
not producing anything. Somehow we think it's God's fault. God, you have forsaken me. And he says, no, that's impossible. I'll never leave you, never fail you, never forsake you. You have departed from me. Amen? I remember somebody said years ago, remember this one, honey? If you're not as close to God as you once were, who moved? The truth of the matter is, it's us. But if you move back with a broken and contrite spirit, breaking a broken heart before God, in true repentance, not a hypocritical show, not putting on an act, but Father is looking for those who worship him in spirit and in truth, out of a broken and contrite heart. The man of God, prophet came in, back, remember the story in the Old Testament? Prophet came in and told him, you've sinned against God. And because of that, your life is forfeit. You've invited judgment into your own life. And the brother was so broken that he went into the corner, he humbled himself. He went into the corner and he wept, and he wept, and he wept. And he cried out to God, he says, oh God, have mercy on me. I have sinned and I'm sorry. And, he, and it was so, and God stopped the prophet in the courtyard and told the prophet, go back and tell him, I have heard your cries, I have seen your heart, and I will add years to your life. Amen? When we're honest, broken before God, not just crying because you got caught, not just crying because you missed a blessing, but crying because you're truly sorry that you disobeyed God. And by disobeying him, you did without his blessing in your life. And you let him know, I will never do that again. Your blessing to me is more important than anything. Amen? Hide your word in your heart, he says, so you would not sin against me. Hide the word. Hide the will of God. Do what I said diligently. Amen. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Receive the truth and let it burn out all the junk, all the lies. Turn your heart to it wholeheartedly. Yield to it absolutely and completely. Amen. Come on. And therefore, Enjoy his blessing in every area of your life. My brothers and sisters, you can't get it horizontally. It's not on this planet. It's only as a relationship with God. Every day growing, expanding of spirit and truth of worship, thanksgiving, praise, hallelujah. Praise God forever. Amen. So in any way, he says here, um, Matthew 6, let's take a look at this one and I think then after that we, we're good for now, yeah. We'll talk about treasures next time. I said, the one we just talked about is the right way to pray. So we're supposed to pray, amen? This last one, this last one that we'll talk about tonight, Matthew 6, 16, 18, it talks about the right way to fast. That means we're supposed to fast, amen? I know some people do intermittent fasting, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it at all. Some people do intermittent fasting so they can lose weight. That's okay. Amen? If it helps them lose weight, it helps them get, hung, get, get, get uh, healthy, then God bless them. Amen? But true fasting is supposed to be so that we replace a meal with the time that it takes to prepare and eat a meal with spending time in the presence of God. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. You might lose weight. That's a nice byproduct of it. But it's the purpose is to deny yourself so that you can take the time and give it to God. Amen? And so he says here in Matthew 6, 16 to 18, Moreover, when you fast, it doesn't say if you fast, it says when you fast, when you pray, when you give. Amen? When you fast, do not be like the hypocrites. They're actors with a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to be men to be fasting. 
Assuredly, I say to you, assuredly, take it to the bank, telling you the truth. I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. Anoint your head means wash your face, take a shower, put on good cologne, or perfume, amen. Do everything in your power to look like you look every other day, amen. Praise God forever. And it says here, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Are you with me? So it's when you fast, hallelujah, you're fasting to be with your Father. Hallelujah. You're saying to God, you are more important to me than this meal. Now, don't get me wrong. God wants you to eat. You need to take care of your body. Amen? He's given you your physical body as a gift. You need to make sure that you eat your well-rounded meals. You can't live on candy. You with me? You can't, you can't live on, on, on junk. You've got to feed yourself so that your body has the nutrients that it needs. Are you with me? It's for strong bones, for strong blood, for, for strong uh, nerves, for, for strong everything. For a clear mind, are you with me? It's up to us to research these things and make sure that we are taking care of ourselves and that we're exercising because your body needs exercise. It craves exercise. Are you with me? So we're to do what we know to do naturally. Absolutely, yes. But we are also sons and daughters of the Most High God. And He loves when we let him know that he is precious, that he is valuable, that he's more to be desired than gold, amen? That he's still the apple of our eyes, so to speak. That there's nothing we won't do for him because there's nothing he wouldn't do for us. We love him, why? Because he first loved us and gave himself for us. Amen, my brothers and sisters? And so a lot of it just has to do with, as I said, your attitude. Don't be phony, don't be fake. Don't, don't do it because to be seen of other people. Let your relationship with God always remain alive, real, true, amen, hallelujah, and enjoy, enjoy him every moment of every day. Glory to God. He, he's the best, forgive me for saying so, he's the best thing that ever happened to you. Amen. Amen. Treat it like that. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together. We love you. We love these times in your presence. We love the word of God. We're grateful for what you have deposited in us tonight. We will take it from here. We'll not be forgetful hearers but we'll be doers. We'll put it to practice in our lives. And we are so grateful. We are so thankful. As always, Lord, traveling mercies upon these that are traveling. And Lord, may our homes be blessed. May our sleep be sweet. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming. It's nice to have you all. God bless you. We'll see you next time.